The MLA Style Guide was recently updated to meet the information needs present in the digital age. The new Style Guide features a universal set of guidelines that can be applied to any kind of work. It is important to ensure that you cite all the sources that you consult for your assignments. This includes sources that have been quoted, paraphrased, or summarized. If you didn't come up with the idea, it needs a citation. Citations are important because they ensure that you are properly attributing ideas to their creators. Citations also allow other people to access and evaluate the sources that you have consulted in your assignment. It is important to include both in-text citations as well as a works cited list. First, we will focus on how to create a works cited list, which will be at the end of your assignment. When thinking about how to cite sources in MLA format, the first things to consider are the core elements of the source. The core elements are author, title of source, title of container, other contributors, version, number, publisher, publication date, and location. So for example, if I'm referencing Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, I can find the following core elements. Different kinds of sources contain different kinds of information. The goal of MLA citations is to provide the reader with the most complete citation possible. It is okay if your source does not contain all of the core elements. The new edition of the MLA makes it easy to include the information that is available and exclude the information that is not. After you have listed your core elements, it is time to compile the core elements into a citation. A complete citation may look like the following. Notice that after each core element, there is either a period or a comma. For Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, our citation may look something like this. Author, title of source, other contributors, version, publisher, publication date, and location. Once you have finished creating a citation for all of your sources, they must be properly formatted. First, make sure that your list is presented in alphabetical order. Second, make sure that if the citation is more than one line, the second line has been indented five spaces from the left. Lastly, ensure that the entire list is double-spaced. In addition to works cited, your assignment must also contain in-text citations. In-text citations help the reader find the corresponding entry in the works cited list and the passage in that source. In MLA, in-text citations include the first entry in the works cited list, which is usually the author, and then a page number. Depending on your sentence structure, you can create an in-text citation in a few different ways. The author and the page number may be at the end of the passage, or author may be included in the sentence and the page number listed at the end of the passage. Need more help? McMaster Libraries has an MLA style guide that provides easy to understand step-by-step -step directions to creating citations. Or how about the Purdue Online Writing Lab MLA style guide? Prefer reading a hard copy? Come access the 8th edition of the MLA Handbook at Mills Library. Need a little more guidance? Ask a librarian.